Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm hoping that you're having a wonderful day. And if you're not, hopefully this video can make it a little bit better for you because book talk and book videos always make me happy. So hopefully I can spread that your way if you're not having a great day. Um, so today the book that I'm going to be uh, reviewing is a book that I have been looking forward to read for a while. And it's Angie Thomas's third book called Concrete Rose. Um, it's a book that I really enjoyed and I'm super happy to be sharing my my thoughts about it with you so let's get it started with the review so before we even get to to the actual review can we talk about the cover like look how cool it is like seeing um the book cover made me even more excited about like the book coming out i was gonna buy it regardless but like just knowing that it looks that cool made me even more excited about the book like how cool is it to have like a young black guy with a do-rag on the cover and the title that reminds me a lot of tupac so that was that was pretty cool so shout out to um the illustrator and um kudos to angie for picking that too because that was uh that's a really nice looking book so um concrete rose what is it about Actually, Concrete Rose is the prequel to Angie Thomas's uh, very first book called The Hate You Give. Um, the Hate You Give is centered around a young girl named Star, but we do meet her father as a loving, caring, responsible um, father and husband. And But we also do know that he has a past as uh, you know a drug dealer, someone who used to be in a gang, someone who had a pretty rough life. So we do know that about him. Um, and so Concrete Rose is um, her father's story. So her father's name is Maverick. And in Concrete Rose, we meet him in his regular life as a cent uh, as a, uh, as a seventeen year old um, young uh, man who lives in uh, uh, like the neighborhood that they call the Garden. And yeah, he's just living his life, playing basketball and everything. He has his girlfriend that he loves. Um, you know, his father was incarcerated when he was young. Um, and then his mother was by herself working two jobs to make ends meet. And meanwhile, you know, he um, also was a gang member, partly for protection. But I'm pretty sure as a lot of young young people, I think he also joined that gang in part because it gives him a sense of belonging as well, like a sense of of being a part of something and, and, and also a sense of family too. Um, and he sells drugs too in order to buy the things that he needs. But I think it's also his own way of trying to, you know, make sure that her mom doesn't have too much of a burden, right? And so his life is not that different from a lot of people of his age in his neighborhood. Nothing that's too different from anyone else um, from the garden, right? But until one day, um, you know, his life is completely takes a different turn because he finds out that he is the father of a three month old baby. And then, you know, he realizes that he doesn't live just for himself, but for somebody else. He's responsible for like a human being, you know, and um, then he has to make the choice. You know, do I continue on the path that I'm in, knowing that for the most part, you know, um, this leads to either being dead or in prison? Or do I uh, try to do the right thing? But then again, that's a lot more easier said than done when you come from the environment that he's in, right? So I guess you can say that Concrete Rose is uh, Maverick's journey from boyhood to manhood. So, um, you know, usually I don't like prequels. Um, I know this is not necessarily like a popular opinion, but I feel like prequels are not super interesting to me for the most part, right? Because usually if you read the, pre the, the character in a prequel, like you have met that character in a different story. So you have an idea of how things end up for that character. And so when you read the prequel, it, it doesn't feel as exciting because you, you just kind of know most of the outcome, if not the entire outcome, right? So prequels are usually not my thing for that because I find them to be typically really boring um and also uh, prequels another reason why i don't like them for the most part um and i can't i can't even tell you when's the last time i actually bothered reading one that's just how much i don't like them um another reason why I, i'm not a big fan of them is because um i feel like you know storytelling in, in different forms whether it's like um you know movies or books it's a business right and so when you have a story that's sold really really well publishers or executives they try to make the most money out of that story that they can so sometimes they have like way too many sequels or sometimes they come out when they've done like a, a zillion sequels then they come out with a prequel just to make more money and when you you can tell when the story is just about making money because the quality is going to be different and so yeah prequels for me in my opinion they're pretty trash for the most part but angie thomas did an excellent job because i really really enjoyed it um angie thomas is just an excellent writer 
Um, I've read all of her books so far and, and she just is such a great storyteller. And what I love the most about her as a writer is her ability to make characters and what the characters go through. She makes it feel very real and that's a skill that is just um, incredible um, for, for her to have. So, you know, Maverick, as I re read the book, you know, he's 17 and I'm an adult. It felt like he was my little brother by the time I was like, I don't know which chapter I was in, but like by the time you, you're into the story, you, you Maverick felt really like my little brother. And I was like, sometimes I was like, yo, you are so stupid. Like, why would you do that? And sometimes I was like really sad for him or you felt for him. Um, or for the most part, you were just rooting for him. You just want him to end up doing what's best. And so uh, you grow attached to the characters. And Maverick, I, I, I really, really, really love that little guy. Well, He's a big guy, but you know, I really liked Maverick a lot. Um, and what, again, what I was saying about how she makes what they go through really real as well is, you know, Maverick's father, as I was saying, you know, he was incarcerated when Maverick was young. And you see in the book what it does to a family to have somebody incarcerated and what they have to go through as well, right? So even, for example, her mom, like at some point, you know, when she was having a hard time, you know, being a mom to Maverick, you know, she has all that burden by herself. Sometimes you can sense that she wishes that, you know, she wasn't alone doing it. And then she wishes that he could be not in prison so they could share that that responsibility together to help him with everything that he's going through. And also, just when Maverick wants to go see his dad, you know, he has to drive three hours and then like, you know, uh, it's very well described like what it's like when they enter the facility to the fact that he can't even really hug them too much or or you really see um, the consequences again that having somebody incarcerated does to a family. And so at the end of the day, you know, the person who's serving their time in prison, there are consequences on the people who love him. And I think that you can really, really see that in the novel. So again, Angie Thomas, good job on that. Um, another thing that I, I love is that uh, throughout the book, you have a lot of analogies and metaphors um, that I think can give a little bit of inspiration to anybody who reads it, but even more so um, someone who's really young, which is the target, the target audience of the book, right? Um, for example, when Maverick learns how to take care of roses, you know, he, he learns that, you know, if you want the, the, the rose to grow, even more so in an environment that the rose is not supposed to grow in, you have to make sure that you get rid of all of the things that hinders um, the growth of that rose. And that's kind of like in real life, you know, if you want to evolve and if you want to grow, you have to get rid of the things or the people that keep you from growing. And sometimes it means to, you know, drop certain friends or change some of your habits, maybe stop smoking, stop drinking. So um, you have a few drops of wisdom that are there throughout the book that I think can really, you know, um, give you a little bit of inspiration, um, no matter who you are. So that's uh, another thing that I really loved about the book. Um, another thing that I think is really great in the book is all the different relationships that the characters have. And I don't want to go on about like all of them because I don't want to tell you the entire thing. But my favorite relationship um, in the book, for one, I'm going to give you two. So one is um, Maverick and his mother. Uh, Maverick becomes a dad when he's 17. And and I know in real life, in my own experience with seeing people who had kids young, um, a lot of times when somebody becomes a mom or a dad really young, the grandparents take on the entire responsibility of taking care of the kid because they feel like the person who had the kid is too young or they just are trying to help and then they end up doing everything for them. And so a lot of my friends who have like young parents, their grandparents were a lot more like their parents for them, right? Um, so what I love about the Maverick's mom is that she she makes him take his own responsibility. So she doesn't take care of the baby for him, but she's there to help him. And so she was like, you know what? You had a baby when you were young. You made that choice. You have to live with the consequences. You take care of that baby. But she's there with him all along. And she's teaching him how to change a diaper, how to make the baby burp, how to make him sleep. She's teaching him about all of these things. Um, and so she's still very much of a support system, but again, she doesn't take the responsibility for him. And again, when you meet Maverick in The Hate You Give, we meet him as this very loving but stern father. And you see where he got that from. And he got that from his mother because it, uh, his mother instilled very good values onto him. And his father too, in his own way, his father also is a big part of who Maverick is um, in present day, which I guess is The Hate You Give. Um, 
So that's a relationship that I really enjoyed in the book. Uh, and also the way that his mother had a good laugh out of the things that um, Maverick's baby made him go through. She was like, ah, you know, you can't sleep. Well, look at what you made me go through. Now it's your turn. So those little moments um, made me smile uh, throughout the book. So another relationship that I liked in the book, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's just the fact that you see how some friendships, how over time, sometimes you, you drift apart, you know? And sometimes you don't even know fully what it is that that made that created that gap between you two, but you just know that the gap is there. And a lot of us, and I include myself, we have a hard time, you know, saying goodbye to friendships when they reach that that expiration date, you know. And we keep it going, and that's how like you, it creates a bond that is like intertwined with like being comfortable with animosity. So I do like that the book has um, shows how different friendships can be complicated too over time. So that also was nicely portrayed. So uh, the book obviously touches upon different themes like, you know, grief, loss, um, you know, righteousness, you know, how to go on the right path, how to stand up for yourself. Um, just like so many things that can be interesting to different type of, types of people. But what I really liked um, the most is that it gives a human, it, it humanizes young black males a lot. And I think that's very important because the media is so busy demonizing them and that book is really nice because it, it, it shows you the different layers that could be behind a person that you could easily judge right because Maverick on the outside looking in it's a guy that a lot of us could be judging right like you know he barely is finishing high school you know he has a, a baby and he's 17 he's in a gang his father was locked up so a lot of things about Maverick could m make him fit into the profile that we are used to judge in society but there's more layers to who people are um, and we shouldn't be judging them based on some of the bad highlights of their lives right so uh, so that's what I think uh, I feel like the book did a great job at doing and I, I do think that uh, there's a great message as well that you know black males they feel too and they have emotions and they have grief and it's important for them to have a space or at least a person that they can share that with um, and that book also again gives you um, a great perspective on that as well so for me you know I think that uh, it's important for young people to, I, I encourage everyone to read more, but I do think that right now we do have a challenge into making younger people read more. And if you want them to read more, it's important for them to have books that tell their stories and for them to be able to see themselves in certain stories. And so I think that's why I feel like this book is important and that's why I, I really, you know, um, uh, you know, respect Angie Thomas's work because she writes um, the stories of people that don't get to see themselves very often in books. So um, again, great job by Angie Thomas. It's a book that I really love, that I highly recommend, uh, especially if you are younger. And, you know, if you read the book and you have thoughts to share, by all means, you can reach out to me. I would love to discuss that with you. So, um, you know, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That would make me really happy. And for the next book, I think I'm going to switch gears a little because this is like my second young adult review. So I think I'm going to review a thriller for my next book. I'm not sure. Oh, I forgot one little thing. And it's I know it's a bit random, but, you know, when I really love an author, I tend to kind of look around. I tend to look at like interviews to see like what they're into or what inspired them to write the book. And um I know that Angie Thomas is a huge fan of Tupac and I have seen Pac references in every single one of her books so far. So that's another thing that I really enjoy because I love Tupac too. So um, yeah, anyways, thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for watching and hopefully you will subscribe and I will see you for my next video. Have a great day. Bye.